So we're gonna hail. We're gonna start again. You've brought the orchestra. Synchronized swimmers. You are the magician. Pull me back together again the way you cut me in half. Make the woman in doubt disappear. Pull the sorrow from between my legs like silk. Not after not after not. The audience applauds. But we can't hear them. African Americans have great power and imagination in the arts. This is a fact. Credited not only for the Harlem Renaissance, a cultural, social, and artistic revolution, but because they created jazz, heavily influenced gospel music, and even started the trend in the rap genre. In her performance at the Grammys, which had people talking for weeks afterwards, Beyonce showcased that imagination. In a spectacular, jaw-dropping, multimedia homage to motherhood, Beyonce celebrates not only her pregnancy, but the uncontainable spirit of the black woman that joined her on stage. Countless of them encircled her, as haunting words from the poet Warson Shire accumulated in the air and eventually fell into the hearts of the audience. An audience whose applause at the end transcended race, gender, and ethnicity. Hundreds stood up to applaud her for the raw pain and courage she unearthed on stage. When the Grammy for Album of the Year went to Adele, many were shocked, angry even. This year with Adele and Beyonce, music's two largest super divas, going up against each other in all major categories, many began to interpret this year's Grammys as a competition between black and white. And when Adele beat Beyonce in all the categories that they were nominated for, not only did the results speak of the Grammys' failure to recognize the minority, but proved how deep racial tension is still embedded in our country, a country that boasts of equality for all. Yet Beyonce put the whole situation in the best terms possible in a past interview when she said, the reality is, sometimes you lose. You're never too good to lose. You're never too big to lose. You're never too smart even to lose, because it happens. African American artists that allow the world to see all their vulnerabilities and create radical type of work often have to redefine what the word winning means in an industry so dominated by white men. The white men, the white men club, is the judge for works. They get to determine which artists, genres, and songs get to become validated and which artists, genres, and songs can become dust. Work that is often held on a pedestal as a torch of example to others is work that caters towards that white audience. Now, within the music industry, Adele symbolizes a traditional form of success. She's white, and she sells millions of CDs to her fans. She created an album where people not of color felt more comfortable singing along to her sentimental pop ballads. Ballads such as Hello. I mean, think about it. How many times have you heard Hello on the radio compared to any of Beyonce's music? If an African American woman decides to make music, an art that champions the aches of similar women, without trying to appeal to a wider audience, it is considered not a victory in music, but a victory in black culture. If an African American woman leads up to society, her being, and chooses to free herself from a cage of stereotypes. It makes the white men in the music industry feel very, very uncomfortable. Because the idea of exemplifying black womanhood to a white audience is considered so unthinkable in such a transgression. But that's what Beyonce did in her visual album Lemonade, an album that Adele referred to in her Grammy speech as beautiful, soul-bearing, and monumental. It was an album that forced Adele to say she could not accept the Grammy Award because she felt truly that Lemonade was the more incredible work of the year. For those of you who haven't heard of it, Lemonade is a visual album released by Beyonce 
that interlaces 12 songs and poetry to create a manifesto to the black woman. With the help of seven directors, Beyonce combines past and present to center the African American female body, making it the norm. Every styling choice that Beyonce makes, from woman's hair, clothes, and range of brown skin tones, speaks acutely to the African American standard of beauty. As seen in the song Formation, when she sings, I like my baby air with my baby hair and afros. I like my Negro nose with Jackson 5 nostrils. More than just emphasizing their beauty, Lemonade features African American women standing or sitting with regal stoicism, with heavy and deep pain burdened on their shoulders and faces, faces that bear scars and burns. The camera pans up on, women, on mothers of slain boys, holding up photographs of their sons that were killed due to police brutality. Later, Beyonce whispers how she tried to be softer, prettier, less awake even, to satisfy the social stigmas surrounding what a black woman is supposed to be, but to no avail. She throws away all her insecurities in the song Hold Up, when she leaves an official looking building, wearing a golden gown, with waves of rage crashing around her. Um, she holds a baseball bat and swings at things around her, a culmination of her fury. Her album could not be released at a better time. They beauty around the height of the Black Lives Matter protest. Her music was a reaffirming form of support to those protesting, and an inspiration for the silent to find their voices. Her music even influenced some signs at the Women's March. Not only did she help cement a possible path for artists looking to do the same, but she broke beyond the bonds of a pop singer. She did not sing songs about her exes, sex, drugs, money, fame, etc., but created a masterpiece full of racially and politi politically charged pieces showing that black women can and will succeed. As Malcolm X once put it, the most disrespected person in America is the black woman. Beyonce's final message and hope is to show that even though African American women are given so many lemons, it is possible for them to make lemonade. And this beautiful reach to heal our nation is what cements her legacy. Thank you for your time today.